So I imagine right now you're wondering, what on earth has this guy been doing? How did he get this? And why on earth is he wearing a hat when he's indoors? Well, there's a reason for each of these. First of all, when it comes to this eye injury that I have, it isn't a tale of bravery. It isn't a happy accident, or an unhappy accident as the case may be, for which I deserve sympathy. No, this is my own stupid fault. I was exercising with a dumbbell. I knew the screw was loose. I knew the screw would degrade it over time because it's a plastic screw and it's a couple of years old. And I decided it would be a good idea to do a skull crusher, which is whereby you lift a dumbbell above your head and then you pull it forward to work your serratus obliques, your triceps, and your upper lats. So, I know, too much information. So I started doing that, and as soon as I get to here, the dumbbell comes loose, and lo and behold, the 10 kilo plate on that side of the dumbbell comes crashing down onto my brow, splitting it open. So, that's unfortunate. And the reason for the hat is simply because I've got stitches in my eyebrow, I can't really wash my hair with normal shampoo, and I don't particularly like this dry shampoo stuff I'm using. It's a bit rubbish, so as a typical self-conscious INFJ, I am concealing my hair. The reason I'm talking about all of this is, as you might imagine, I'm a bit behind on content. I didn't manage to get a video filmed this week because, first of all, I'm recovering, I was a bit shaken up, and I don't want to go on camera doing a kind of a lecture-style video with this awful thing gazing at you. But I wanted to do a video this um, week anyway, simply because I thought this would be a good application of the principle of hormesis. This is something found in nature whereby an organism in response to a negative stimuli adapts in a positive way. Thus the negative stimuli, even though it affected the organism negatively, the overall effect is positive. When we take in such things as phytonutrients from things like, you know, turmeric. I'm big on nutrition, so this is one of my geek subjects. We end up adapting in a positive way to a chemical found in nature which is actually intended as a poison to ward off, you know, predators, as the case may be. So my friend David did a video on YouTube recently talking about how to adapt to setbacks in a positive way, how to come back harder and stronger. Nathan from the Love Who channel did a very similar video on the topic too. So obviously this is a hot topic and I'll link both those videos below in the description because I think they're absolutely great. And I wanted to do a very similar video, but I wanted to take a more kind of, I don't know, scientific methodology just to contribute rather than just replicating what's already been done. So it occurs to me that when we're adapting to something negative, there are actually multiple stages, and we must perform these stages in a correct sequence in order to make the most of the situation and to have as hormetic, hormetic a response to the negative stimuli as possible. So let's <laughs> use my um, stupidity as an example. The first thing I did when I had the accident was initiate the first step. The first step of adapting to a negative situation isn't just to think positively. You don't disassociate yourself from it. No. When something bad occurs to you, you use the stress, you use the cortisol that's in your system in a creative and positive way. How you do that is taking steps to ensure this does not happen again. I, continuing the trend of stupidity, misapplied this. The first thing I did after, you know, just applying a cold compress to the wound was go on the computer and order a new set of dumbbell screws, metal ones, which wouldn't degrade, to prevent that ever happening again. What I should have done was prioritize the injury, get onto the emergency services, and then, maybe when I'm back home from hospital, start initiating that process. So that was a misapplication, but it was still the correct step. I didn't disassociate from it. What I did was I recognized that it was a bad thing happening to me. I recognized that I did not want it to happen again. And then I initiated steps in order to ensure that it wouldn't happen again. So that's the primary hormetic response. The primary hormetic response is one in which ensures the bad thing that happened to you or to the organism or what have you will not happen again in the future. All additional positive benefits from hormesis are surplus to the primary purpose of adaptation to the very specific stimuli. So, continuing my little tale, I went to hospital thereafter. I talked to my friend who's a nurse. She recommended 
getting it stitched up. I talked to the emergency services. They said it might be a good idea. And so I decided to go to A&E. Obviously I spent a good hour, well, a good few hours waiting to be seen. But you know, a good four and a half hours later, I came out of hospital with some stitches, feeling pretty tired, pretty groggy. I couldn't really do much for like the next few days. This is where the second phase of the adaptive response comes in. This is where it's healthy to disassociate yourself from the negativity. Now that you've already used the stress to take the appropriate action, first of all, to, you know, begin the healing process, and secondly, to prevent that bad thing that occurred to you from happening again in the future, this is where it's safe to disassociate yourself, to start viewing the circumstances you're in in a more positive light. You've acknowledged the negativity, and now you can start perceiving it in a constructive manner and building upon that which happened to you. So, in my case, I was a bit tired, I couldn't really do any camera stuff, I knew that my focus needed to be placed elsewhere, so I started, you know, working a bit more on the website, improving my type service, getting that more well presented for when I'm properly releasing it to the public, and more importantly, I started meditating more. I realised a lot of the things that have occurred recently, well I had the flu just before I had that injury because of stress, and then I had this injury again because I just wasn't thinking clearly. So I realised I needed to implement measures. I'm a big proponent of meditation, I've done it numerous times in my life, and I realised I'd have gotten out of the habit recently. So I got back on that horse, and I'm already feeling the benefits. It's helped me maintain a positive, kind of parasympathetic, relaxed state in which I can recover most effectively. But it's also given me perspective. It's also made me realise what additional content I could be releasing on the channel. It's made me realise I focused so much on this lecture style video, which I'm a big fan of, I'm very happy with that and I'm glad people are enjoying it, but I focused on it to such an extent as I'm neglecting those who would prefer more bite-sized formats. I've been neglecting, or I would say postponing, the primary purpose of the channel, which is not just saying what type is what and explaining CPT methodology to people, which is very important obviously, but it's actually employing CPT in order to help people overcome themselves, overcome their limitations, employ one function and deactivate another function according to the needs of the situation. This is the primary purpose of the channel and I realise I haven't started that yet. And I know that's primarily because I wanted to build a foundation of theory first, but I realise that now is actually an amazing time to start doing that, or at the very least to start making preparations for those kinds of videos shorter, snappier videos explaining type differences for those who are more short on time, and medium length videos that produce a more seamless stream of information in order to both motivate people to activate different cognitive functions and actually describe the ways in which these functions can be activated in the first place. So this is phase two of the adaptive response. I've distanced myself from the negativity, I'm not working myself up, I'm allowing my body to maintain that kind of parasympathetic healing state, and I'm recognising and accepting the fact that I'm not going to be able to get a lot done while I'm in this tired, groggy healing state. But what I can do is employ that state in order to take advantage of the, the distance I have, the detachment I have from the immediate vicinity of reality, in order to gaze at a more big picture landscape and see things that I could be doing differently. It's a time to distance myself, take a bigger picture, and then reassess what I've been doing, analyze what I've been doing, think more clearly about what you would like to receive from the channel, and now I can approach the situation when I'm back fully functioning in a more constructive and direct and focused manner, having now a better, more holistic perspective of how to develop this channel in a more constructive way. And as a secondary benefit, I'm a pretty type A kind of person. Not to say I've always been that, not to say that everyone is at birth either type A or type B, or that personalities can be reduced to such <laughs> arbitrary binary concepts, but you know, in the traditional colloquial term, I'm a pretty intense person. I'm pretty intense in here, and I'm often quite intense externally as well now, especially now that I've, I have a higher degree of activated extroverted functions. So the result is I get stressed out pretty easily. I get worked up about things. I get very invested 
and what I'm doing. I get very invested in my internal dialogue too. So overall, I have a very intense relationship with both internal and external reality, and therefore I need to implement life measures in order to keep on top of my stress levels to prevent my cortisol levels, you know, the stress hormone getting too high, which, you know, then suppresses your immune system, for example. It can overly cement a rigid structure in your mind, which is great for focus, but it also prevents you adapting to new contexts. It prevents you from taking a bigger picture perspective and reassessing and looking at yourself in a more objective manner in order to, again, adapt to different circumstances. So everything is obviously important in moderation, but when it comes to myself, the thing I need to mitigate most is stress levels. So this has been a arguably healthy reminder of that, but it's also given me an opportunity just to enjoy taking a step back from my usual workload, just to enjoy reducing my usual intensity to something approximating a normal human being and approach that in a positive light. Because at the end of the day, the poison's in the dose. It's not bad to have a work ethic, and it's definitely not bad to be relaxed. But obviously there's extremes on either end where you're working yourself to death and accumulating various negative stimuli along the way to which you're not really adapting. And then the other extreme is obviously just sitting around doing nothing, not even reflecting, and just wasting your life and not impacting your world in a positive way. So there's that middle ground. And as I like to say, everything is on a continuum, on a spectrum, not to be too postmodern about it. So you can be focused, but then you'll need to balance that focus and intensity with phases of relaxation. So this injury and you know the flu that I had before that has given me an opportunity just to relax a bit, to distance myself from this very serious concrete reality I was residing within beforehand and touch base with my core introverted self, to touch base with the part of myself that likes to reflect and ruminate in a relaxed state that allows, that thinks very intuitively, introverted intuition, introverted thinking, in a holistic manner that seeks to reduce stress levels in order to ensure a continuous supply of holistic perspective. So that's all great. You have a bad thing happen to you. You first of all deal with that bad thing to make sure it doesn't happen again using the stress that you are experiencing at the time. And then the second stage is taking a positive approach, taking a positive spin on the situation if you like, and using that spin for self-growth. Using what happened to you and the state you are now residing in in order to work on areas you wouldn't necessarily have worked on beforehand, to use the state you're in, to use the circumstances you now find yourself within, to work on yourself, to nourish yourself, to touch base with the core of your being that you may have been neglecting beforehand, and to reassess what you've been doing so far and see what's working, what's not working, what's important to you, and what's important to the people who are important to you. But then this is all working towards the third and final stage, because the fact is, something bad has occurred. You have suffered a setback. There's no point just taking an overly positive spin on it and saying, oh, well, it's a setback, but it's a good thing overall because I've accomplished this and this. And this isn't to disparage, and this isn't to lessen the overall positivity of the experience. But it is important to note that a bad thing has occurred, you have suffered a setback, and it's important to recognize that you need to catch up. Yes, you've taken the situation and the circumstances in a positive way, and you've used them to work on things that you may not otherwise have worked on. But if it's a week, if it's two weeks, if it's even more than that, Every week is a loss of work. Every week is a week in which you could have been doing something else. So just because you've recovered from the trauma, just because you've now healed, let's say a week, two weeks, or what have you, later, it doesn't change the fact that you have some catching up to do. 
it doesn't change the fact that you are behind schedule. So you still have to accept that you've had a setback. And now that you've taken the time out to heal, recuperate, gain a new perspective, and hopefully you're coming back stronger than you were before, you now need to employ that energy in order to continue working towards the deadlines that you may have set yourself. And obviously you can't be thinking about this when you're in phase two, because that's when you're looking after yourself and you're taking advantage of the new perspective. You can't just be worrying about, oh, I'm going to have all this work to catch up on. But once you're in a position of strength, once you are recovered, it is so important to recognize that you've had a setback, to recognize that it is now time to start putting all that you've been working on during this recovery period into practice and to prove to yourself that you are stronger, to prove to yourself that this has been a good experience. Because if you just have a bad experience and during that initial phase, you treat it in a positive way, you can't just act like the setback never happened because then you would not be fully convinced that you are a stronger person. Now it is time to prove to yourself that I have had a hormetic response, that I have had a positive response and that I am now a better person, a stronger person than I was before. And maybe you won't be able to catch up fully with the work that you lost out on, but it's important to try. And not try in a over the top, I'm gonna get stressed out again way and put myself in a situation I was before, but rather synergize that objective positivity you've accumulated in the recovery phase with the intensity that you had beforehand. Blend these two things together. And then you'll simultaneously have this controlled intensity that allows you to work and get back on that horse. Even if you can't fully get back into schedule, you can still continue to work in the way that you did before, but now you'll be doing so with that added buffer against setbacks in the future. Because of phase one, you prevented those setbacks happening again. And phase two, you now know additional areas that you can work on. So that means your overall work during phase three will be more efficient and will increase the likelihood of you not only getting back on schedule, but actually accomplishing your goals at an even higher rate than you were before. While simultaneously assured, owing to the positive adaptations you've made to your life and to yourself during that recovery phase, that you can handle this workload. Whereas beforehand, you may not have been able to at all. And this isn't to say you should take on more workload and you should push yourself to your very limit again, but rather to say that you've become more efficient. You've used that recovery time to become more efficient. And now that you have that efficiency, you can do more work with less effort. So as such, it is incredibly important to have a positive, adaptive response to any kind of setback that we may incur along our various paths. But at the same time, it's important to get the sequence right and it's important not to focus too much on one facet of this multi-stage process. For example, if you just focused on the first stage, that is making sure it doesn't happen again, well, that's fair enough, but you still need to go through this recovery phase a lot of the time. And if you don't use that to your greatest advantage, then it'll be very difficult to look back on the event in a positive way. You just saw it as something that you prevented happening again in the future, which is great, and I do believe it's the most important part. But then it's a real shame if you don't use that recovery phase, that parasympathetic phase, to its greatest advantage and use that phase to acquire new perspectives, to acquire new ideas, and to touch base with parts of yourself that you may have beforehand been neglecting. And if you just skip straight to the second phase, then all you're doing is disassociating yourself from the trauma. You're failing to recognize that something bad has happened to you, and thus you're failing to take steps to ensure it doesn't happen again. And thus, it's more of a self-delusion process because you're failing to recognize something bad's happened and it's gonna keep happening again and again in the future. And each time it happens, and each time you just jump straight to phase two and take it in a positive way, you are actually losing faith in that positivity. That positivity is becoming more innately delusional because it's difficult to take something in a positive way if it keeps happening to you and you keep failing to learn from your errors. And finally, if you just skip straight to phase three and just jump back on that wagon full throttle, then not only are you 
failing to ensure it doesn't happen again, but you're failing to learn from the situation and reduce the intensity and the haphazardness that led to you occurring that setback in the first place. For example, again, using my little dumbbell incident, if I fail to learn from it, and I also fail to use the time to my greatest advantage, I develop a negative relationship with that recovery phase, and thus I develop a negative relationship with that kind of relaxed parasympathetic state in general, because all I want to do is just act, 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 produce, produce, work, work. And that just exacerbates the overall effect and increases the likelihood of that situation occurring again in the first place. Because the very thing that led to that accident was me being too stressed, was me being unfocused because I was trying to contain too much in my head at any one time. And as such, it is incredibly important to integrate these three phases together and get the sequence correct because otherwise you're failing to really capitalize on the obstacles that life places in our way in order for us to learn, in order for us to become better versions of ourselves. And ultimately, failing to employ a positive adaptive response to trauma inevitably increases the likelihood of those traumas occurring again in the future while decreasing any kind of positive effect we can take from them. Essentially, just amplifying the negativity. And as such, I just think it is so incredibly, incredibly important to take a constructive attitude to any setbacks we may have throughout our lives so that we can look back on these setbacks with gratitude. Gratitude that we received such a stimuli necessary as to allow for self-growth, for evolution. And then we can appreciate the person we are in light of all the things that we have went through. So this seems to be a bit of a hot topic at the moment. I don't know if there's some kind of seasonal trend whereby you know, we accumulate some kind of karmic or natural self-destructive energy throughout the course of the year that tends to peak around December, resulting in various setbacks along the way, or as we approach a new year, which you know, is a fairly arbitrary human term anyway, we may feel a certain stress and need to get something done because we might set goals because we might set deadlines for the end of the year and in a typical human fashion we might start working harder and harder and harder as we approach the deadline until we're working at maximum capacity and then that might actually lead, ironically, to us incurring setbacks. And actually falling further short of our deadline than we would have had we not been working so damn hard in the first place. So thank you so much for watching that video. I hope it was interesting, I hope it was informative, and I hope it's presented a different perspective and perhaps a more scientific methodology on how we can approach the negative things that happen to us, particularly in regards to setbacks, in a more positive and constructive manner. What are your own stories when it comes to negative setbacks and what strategies do you personally use to overcome them? Has anything happened to you this year? There's been a setback in regards to your goals and deadlines and how did you overcome it? What strategies did you personally employ? And more importantly, and perhaps most importantly of all, have you ever had a 10 kilo cast iron plate fall on your head? And how did you deal with that situation? So thank you so much for watching that video. I hope it was informative and apologies for this ugly little thing staring at you throughout the course of the video and I'll be seeing you all next week, hopefully fully recovered. Take care.